Hi, my name is Kirkwood. I'm an Applications Engineer for Hawkridge Systems. And today I'd like to show you two methods for removing areas that are over overlapping in our multi-body parts. So these two methods will achieve the exact same geometry and both update in very similar ways. But at the end we're going to use some tools in SolidWorks to evaluate which features are more efficient in terms of rebuild times. So let's jump into the first method. So here's our example piece. We have this attachment with some tabs or tenon joints that we want to cut into this base plate. Right now they're just overlapping, taking up the same area. So first thing we're going to do is create a copy of our attachment body. Come up here to Insert, Features, Move slash Copy Body. We'll just create a copy in the exact same place. No translation or rotation. Select OK and ignore this notification that's just telling us we haven't moved it. That's fine. So now in our solid bodies folder we have three different bodies. The attachment, the base, and the copy. And we're going to use the copy to remove area from the base. So I'll come up here to insert, features, combine. Make sure we have the subtraction operation selected and our main body is going to be the base plate and our body to combine is going to be the copy. So I'll select OK. Now if I hide the attachment, there's our mortise joints cut into the base plate in the exact same area that was being occupied by the attachment tenons. And any changes we make at this point to the tenon size or add additional ones, as long as it's overlapping our base body, it's going to update those cutouts. Okay, so let's check out the second method. So I'll tab over to an identical model. I've just changed a couple of the colors for reference. So this time, we're going to use the indent tool. So I'll come up here to Features, Indent. This saves us the time of making that copy of the body. So pretty much the same selection. Our target body is going to be the base plate, and our tool body region is going to be our attachment which I'll just select in the graphics area and we'll choose to make a cut with that area. So there's the preview of any overlapping sections. And another advantage to using the indent tool is I can add clearance, so making those mortise joints slightly large than the, larger than the tenons. But just so we have identical models, I'm going to leave it at zero clearance. So I'll select OK and again just hide my attachment body and there we have our mortise joints cut out. So same geometry and both will update if we ever change anything with the tenons. But which method's bet better? Which method's more efficient? To evaluate this, I'm going to use my feature statistics. So it's over here in the evaluate tab, statistics. This is going to give me an overall rebuild time for my entire model as well as the rebuild times for each individual feature. So we have a cut extrude that's taking up the most time at 0.42 seconds. And the next most intensive one is the indent at 0.12 seconds. So not too bad, still rebuilding very fast. Let's check out the other version. Again, coming up to evaluate statistics. Total rebuild time for this version is 9 tenths of a second. And our second most intensive feature is our combine at 0.23 seconds. We also have that copy of the body we made at 0.01 seconds. So nearly double the amount of time to rebuild this version versus our other. Now I realize these times are still pretty small and it won't really matter for the level of complexity we have in this model, but you can see how nice feature statistics is as a tool for analyzing our features if you are experiencing long rebuild times to figure out which ones you may want to look for a different method to create that geometry. So thank you for watching this video. Uh, if you'd like to see more tricks and tips like this, please subscribe to our Hawkridge Systems YouTube channel.